Blessings and blessings. Beautiful humans of the internet. This video is inspired by a conversation I was just having uh, behind the scenes with a group of men in a mastermind that I created a couple years ago. The title was At My Lowest. A friend of mine recently reached out to me and shared how she just can't stop crying. And I shared with her, well, first I said, congratulations. Congratulations. And she said, congratulations for what? And I said, congratulations on creating uh, enough space for your somatic body to process and grieve that which you have been avoiding. That hit her like a ton of bricks. And then I jumped in and said, I also am in a process of grieving. One of the things I, I know to be true is that for a vast majority of my life, I didn't believe there was space for me to grieve. I didn't think there was space for me to be sad. So out of that, the, 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 the shadow aspect of myself, was birthed this beautiful sort of resilience, this, this like, I will not, I will not fold. I will hold the high watch. And I created this vortex around me where only joy and, and uh, the positive, easy emotions were able to flow at the top. And what I've come to realize is that there's some grieving that needs to continuously happen for the parts of me and moments in my life where I, I didn't. And one of those spaces I'm going to tell you about is uh, we were talking about spending money. And I was sharing how, you know, 2015, 16, 17, 18, I was driving a beat up ass pre Prius living way below my means. And I had more than a half a million dollars sitting in an account. And I said that, you know, I remember picking up mattresses on the side of the road and sleeping on them um, at my lowest. And what the reason why I would do that is because of an old trauma wound from childhood, which essentially stated that my parents are already too stressed out and holding too much for me to add to their stress. Therefore, I will, instead of asking for support from my mom or family, I'd rather pick up a mattress on the side of the road and sleep on it than add to my mom's stress. So at my lowest, my father, beautiful man, rest his beautiful soul, was uh, living in a crack motel in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, not too far, maybe two miles away from the college I was going to. He followed me there. Um, and it was a dark space for him, super dark, heavy. And the 18-year-old and 19-year-old and 20-year-old version of me didn't know how to process his dark space. And so, like literally, I did not cry. What I did was... And this is at the same time that my mom was, was going through it. And so I reached out to my mom and I said, hey, I don't need a car. I don't need a car. Sell my Jeep. I'll take the bus for a year. And so I gave my mom my car for, for her to sell. So she had some extra money. And I took the bus and I worked at the student union as a secretary and uh, at a gym making smoothies and working with the kids uh, during certain times. And all the while, the 19, 20 year old version of me was dying on the inside because my father was withering away. And in my mind, I had to make it. I had to finish and get out of college soon, make a bunch of money so I could send him to rehab and save my mom. All of this, this kid was holding. I'm 41 going on 42. 
I can look back at that kid now and say, wow, you needed to cry. You needed a shoulder. You needed a space to vent and to share how scared you were because you didn't want your dad to die and you didn't want your mom to suffer. And so instead you suffered. You struggled. You put it all on you. And so at my lowest, my friends were like, bro, you picked up a mattress? Yes, multiple times. And it got even worse. It got even worse. My dad had to move in with me. So imagine you're supposed to be at college having a good time. And my dad's living in the living room on a beat up mattress we found outside. While my friends are walking past him in the middle of the night. I never cried. You know what I did? I went to sleep early. And I worked my ass off and I got straight A's. Master's degree. And I got out of college and I went straight to L.A. and I said, it's game one, I got to make it. And my heart broke down. My heart literally broke down. I literally had a, a condition come up because I was so stressed out from all holding so much. And I'm only sharing this because some of you right now are holding so much. And I didn't know what I know now that I needed to give it to somebody else, that I needed to relieve the pressure because it was building and building and building. And with the, the, the distinction between um, a river and, an, and, a, and a, a swamp is there's an inlet and an outlet. There was no outlet for me. It came in and I stored it in my somatic body until my body started to give out. My body started to Say, hey, we're going to give you some signals. If you don't fix this, you're going to die. If you don't fix this, we're going to keep breaking down until you get that you need to relieve this. So I share all of this to say, if you right now are holding more than feels comfortable, one, I remind you that your potential is always, your potential is always greater than the problem. And that life, life doesn't come to you. It comes from you. But the from part, we have to clean, we have to clear, we have to create space. So the from uh, has more energy, has more grit, more aliveness. It's invigorated with a certain energy. And so how do we do that? Well, we give we give some of the shame and guilt and trauma that we've been holding to other people, qualified people. We give it to them. We say, hey, I can't hold all of this by myself. I just need to say it. I need to get it off my chest. I need you to know that I'm struggling. I need you to know that I'm hurting. I need you to know that I'm sad. I need you to know that it's a lot for me to be with right now. Oftentimes, just saying the words creates relief. So whatever you're being with, I promise you, number one, nothing on the planet is stagnant. Every storm, every weather pattern that ever has come has always also gone. It is cyclical. But we learn from each storm. We learn in such a way that we build shelters and we give ourselves an opportunity to build a somatic body that can be with the storm. Mm, somebody's going to get this. Every, every weather, weather pattern, whether it be the, the, the best summer breeze on the planet or the worst winter storm you've ever felt, every single one of them is moving through. It's passing through. But every season, if you choose, if you decide, if you lean in, if you get and you pick up the frequency and the vibration of what I am uh, 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 allowing to move through me, if you pick it up, you can build a somatic body that can hold Everything you say you want and then some. People ask me all the time, how'd you get rich? I stopped trying to hold it by myself. How'd you get wealthy? I asked for help. Mm. And I did my absolute best to serve people. To really help. 
whether you can give me a dollar or not, how can I really help? There's a divine curriculum on each and every one of our souls. And you signed up for it. You can say yes or you can resist, but it's there. All you're viewing in me is somebody who said yes to the divine curriculum, regardless of the circumstances, whether it's good and sun shining or it's the worst of times, I will show up and open this heart and reveal what I am being with and what I'm noticing in clients and the, uh, the, 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 the mass group consciousness. Yes. It's not the load that breaks us down, but the way we carry it. Mm. Blessings and blessings, everybody. I just thought I'd jump in and share. I got a coaching call with one of my clients in two minutes. Uh, as soon as I end this, just drop a whole bunch of comments on it, please, so that other people see it. I love you all. I'm going to save this. Peace. Peace and blessings.